So-called ocean heat waves are happening more often, lasting longer, and becoming more severe. That's according to a recent data published in scientific journals. Researchers compared the phenomenon with wildfires on land. But instead of wiping out forests, they destroy kelp, seagrass, and coral reefs underwater. One group of scientists is trying to save coral reefs by cataloging all 150,000 of them worldwide. For his Climate Diary series, Mark Phillips swam along on a recent expedition to the most famous coral reef in the world. Good morning. Welcome to the Great Barrier Reef and to the world's biggest reef mapping project. Because if you want to know how the reefs of the world are doing, you got to map them. This is how research on the world's threatened coral reef systems has traditionally been done. Whenever I got this seatbelt, it's all secured. A team of marine scientists flies out. The destination this time, Lady Elliot Island, a speck of coral on Australia's 1,400 mile long Great Barrier Reef. Welcome to the Great Barrier Reef. The team inspects the coral. This particular patch seems to be doing okay. The coral seems stable and the local wildlife seems to be holding its own. But the team, including marine biologist Emma Kennedy, knows they're only getting a close-up view of a much bigger and not always happy picture. There's only a certain number of scientists and really we can only cover very lit little ground going out with our scuba diving kit over an area that's the size of Japan, it's huge. But a new tool is being developed to provide that bigger picture. This is Lady Elliot Island Reef up close. This is it from space. And these are other reefs all over the world. Subsea science has met outer space science. We have liftoff of the Falcon 9. To look down, you've got to go up. A new system has been launched where swarms of shoebox-sized mini-satellites have been deployed to orbit over the North and South Poles and take pictures as the Earth spins underneath. That means, by the way, that we see every field, every tree, every reef, everywhere, every day. We're going to go right in to Lady Elliot Island where you were located. And that, says Planet Lab's Andrew Zoli, means... Because we see them every day, we can see how they're changing. Changing, too often in these global warming days from healthy living organisms to dead ones. Rising ocean temperatures have been killing coral, leaving a white skeleton behind. They call it bleaching. Nobody knows exactly how much of it has actually been happening, but they soon will. The planet imagery is coming over on a daily basis. We finally can get a good eye on where it's changing and where not. Chris Rolfsma is another marine scientist who spent a career studying reefs up close. So this is what's mapped. Along with partners at Arizona State University, he's using his knowledge to develop software to turn the satellite pictures into a diagnosis of reef health or Blue sickness. Resident. The point being that you'll be able to do this on every reef in the world. That's, that's the idea, yeah. And that information is being assembled for the first time in a worldwide living coral atlas run by the estate of the late Microsoft co-founder and marine enthusiast Paul Allen. The marine scientists and the space scientists are pulled together by project coordinator Lauren Kickham. My excitement comes when I share this with the people in the field that are actually going to be using it, and they're just amazed. And that sort of response, you know, makes you feel pretty good. I got a bit emotional. I was like, ah. The world's coral reefs are not important just because they're nice to look at. They're important for what they tell us about what's happening to the planet. The turtles may not give interviews, and then the one you did, George. But back. geology professor Stuart Finn does. Why is it important to pay attention to the health of the world's reefs? Is it are the reefs, to coin a phrase, the canary in the coal mine? They are the canary in the coal mine because our oceans and heat redistribution in oceans drives our cl global climate system. Um, yes, you're right. Monitoring how the oceans are changing, how that affects the reefs, the climate, and ultimately us, will now get a little easier. It's going to be a fantastic resource for scientists trying to understand what's happening. Yeah, no, much better. 
A project this big, of course, takes time. It won't be done for two and a half years. And then they'll keep on watching. It's incredible to think they could map all of those coral reefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as beautiful as they are, it's important to remember that they're a gauge of the, the world's health, really. And that climate change yeah. is real. Yeah. Is there anything Mark Phillips can't do? <laughs> Any story no. he can't do? I love his writing. I know. Oh, yeah. His writing, he's a great, great story. We might be able to come up with one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we think hard we enough. we got a challenge for you, Mark Phillips. Well done. <laughs> well done, beautiful piece.